So good evening. Today is Monday, May 3rd. It is 516. Um, and this is the Keisha Farms uh, meeting. Uh, we are recording this meeting to be in line with the governor's executive order regarding remote uh, meetings. And with that, um, I'll let the honorable chairwoman take it from there. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I think we have everybody in attendance. Thank you very much. I think this is gonna be a really um, fruitful meeting. Um, did anyone have any questions about Mary's minutes from the last meeting? Not the vision no. session, the actual meeting itself? No. Any corrections that need to be made? Okay, can I get a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Thank you, Jim, and a second, Pam? I second. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Let's let's move quickly to the open issues. Um, Gary, do you have an update for us on the pro the grant and where it is in the process? Uh, it's been submitted, and my last conversation with them, it was under review, and they were uh, they were going to try to get it on last month's agenda. I'm not sure if it made it, um, but I haven't heard anything new. So okay. sometimes no news is good news. They would have gotten back to me. I asked them to just take a precursory review, see if there's anything I might have missed, and I got nothing back yet. So. All right. Well, that's good news because I think they review once a month and I think it's the first or second week. So maybe they'll be able to address it this month. Great news. All right. I know Alex has a lot for us. So we're going to looking forward to the University of Hartford update. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So uh, first things first, I know. Oh, am I able to share my screen? Jerry, can you share a screen? Right now. Great. Thank you. So first off, I'm gonna go over the results um, from the first listening session. This is a combination of, um, I took notes while it was going on and then I went back and rewatched it. Um, in addition, I took a screenshot of all the chat box comments. Um, so I was able to compile um, pretty much just a tally of what everyone, um, what everyone kind of thought. Um, can everyone see this? Yes. yes. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Yes. All right. So, so these are the these are the results, and then after this, I'm going to kind of break it down into a few um, a few circle graphs. So, uh, in terms of you know, the number one was definitely open space, um, which kind of keeps it broad, um, followed by walking trails, and you know, you you can see um, other points that were brought up. Um, was which one concern to us being um, the committee, um, more transparency, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, but that's uh, uh, definitely a topic we should address tonight. Um, another concern that I heard multiple times was concern about maintaining costs. Um, residents um, expressed that there are other town plots of land that are not properly maintained and they didn't want this to turn into another one of those. Um, People also brought up fixing other sports fields rather than making this into one. Um, and then you can see um, from there. Um, uh, neighborhood concerns. Um, the number one was increased traffic on the road. They said that there's, it's already kind of a cut through. Um, so having sports fields or certain ideas um, that, we, that were addressed during a listening session um, could result in increased traffic, which was a, which was a concern. Um, so, so this is the first number. So um, the good thing about this graph is that it has some consistency. The bad thing is that there's a number of different options, right? While we're trying to please as many people as we can. Um, so one thing that you can notice is if you take a look at 23 at the blue and you follow that around to um, kind of the teal at 12, that is open space, walking trails, educational system, community garden, and agriculture. Um, obviously, I think everyone's in agreement that this land can be used for many uses. It's, it's a large piece of land. Um, and so having a combination of this, we're looking at about, I did the math, it was 82%. There's 92, 97 people on this chart. So that would be 82%. Um, and while I don't think, you know, just 90 people seven's opinion is clearly not enough um, to decide what we're going to do with the property, it does show, um, people are more interested in doing less, um, which, is, which is exciting to see. 
So that kind of gives you a visual um, that, you know, less is, is more, at least from this first listening session. All right, and then um, I, you know, this is a little, a little bit more simple. Um, it's clear that from a neighborhood concern, they're concerned about uh, loss of a property value, um, increased traffic, parking concerns, and then um, the idea of creating some sort of landscape to um, kind of block whatever goes onto the Keisha Farms property. And then other comments um, from the residents. Um, as I mentioned earlier, fix the other sports fields. Um, but the biggest, the biggest plot on this graph would be the green, which is uh, being more transparent. So um, as you know, in, in my next slide, I'm gonna talk a little bit about takeaways um, and some suggestions in our long um, document that we provided, but, but I can also touch on that um, in a second. So after listening to the listening session two times, um, the kind of the common themes that, that I heard at least was the residents who advocated for open space also had a higher propensity to want the land to stay for public use and not being overdeveloped. Um, some examples would be community gardens, walking trails, agriculture, open space, um, not overdeveloped. Um, it was also clear from a number of residents whose property abut prop the Keisha Farms property um, that they were concerned about noise, traffic, light pollution, pretty much um, anything that's very developed on that land. Um, there, there was serious pushback from the neighborhood. And then finally, um, the residents want to keep the Keisha Farms Committee to be more transparent. Um, and some ideas would include um, expanding from the Facebook page, possibly creating a website, um, Instagram, Twitter, um, increasing the number of channels, even if it's the same content, having different channels um, results in hitting more viewers, um, which creates more transparency. In addition, which I, th I think we can talk about, although it is in our final project, um, Chaz and I are concerned that by disabling comments, while we understand that it's supposed to be an informational site and maybe expanding into different channels um, would allow this to happen, but having comments and having interaction between the so-called customers or residents um, will, I think, create more transparency and allow people to understand that they're actually getting, or we are getting segue and headway on, on this project. Um, hey, Alex, you, can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the data that you presented on the first slide. Yes. Um, did that also include uh, the email and other written communication? Right. Within that. So it did not include any emails. Um, that was one of my questions. Um, one of my questions was, you know, we, we have this Weathersfield or this Keisha Farms um, email address where people can ask questions. Um, I have not heard from anyone. Is anyone answering those emails? Because um, part of being transparent would be answering the questions that are being asked, obviously. Um, and number two, um, I do agree. I would like access to, you know, if, if there were a number of suggestions. Alex, can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. This is Pam. Um, how are we addressing the questions in the chat room? Right. Oh, Pam, so, before we go there, Gary, did do we have the emails that you had mentioned people had sent in that we can get over to Alex so he can include those results? Yeah, in? I was going to say, let's answer one question at a time. So yes, um, and I'm more than happy to add someone else's email. Add So we're using an alias email, which is Keisha comments at weathersfieldct.com. Of, um, and I can add anyone else's email to that. If someone else wants to, I'll be just blunt. I don't have the time to um, mm -hmm. to uh, monitor the emails as they come in. I just there's just, it's just too much for one person. Um, but I will forward them over to Alex. If someone else wants, I mean, I can have multiple people receive them um, so that when the emails come in, you know, more than one of you uh, gets them. My suspicion is you probably. Want to be careful with how you respond because you're ultimately you're one person reviewing it that's your opinion when you respond versus what might actually be you're not responding on behalf of the, the committee okay. so very tricky yeah my my i was i was looking for the emails just to include in uh the, what the community would like to see yep agreed far i'm not necessarily in response like oh, that we want to respond to it 
other than if we had an like an out of office type reply saying we've received it and thank you and go here for more information. Yep, I can actually do both of those. I can forward them to Alex and I can uh, put the away message up. And yeah. Gary, I I didn't agree initially to be have my name on them, but I will do it because I understand that if there's a huge volume that it's impossible for you to keep track of it. So you can put my uh, my email on it too. And I will not respond to any. I will just welcome the out of office. Thank you for your comments. It will be included and passed on. Yeah, and if I could um, get those as well, obviously I would not comment or email back. I would just like to keep that for tally purposes. Um, and now to Pam, I think you had a question. Out of courtesy, I was just wondering how are we responding to the questions that were posed in the chat room? I mean, it was right. so wonderful, by the way, Alex, that you did a screenshot on all of them because I was taking notes, but uh, clearly that was the right. better idea. I mean, so we can, so, so as I said, I have a screenshot um, and I think I've sent them over to a few people in, in this committee. Um, I have everyone, the whole conversation um, screenshotted. So, I mean, one way I could do it, I guess I could backtrack and go through the people's names and like find their email. Um, or I guess we leave it at that. Um, no, so a couple of things. Uh, so one, I, I have, uh, I copied and pasted all the comments into a Word document. I don't know if that's easier than a screenshot to work with, but it has the people who commented and what their particular questions were. Um, we did say we would get back to them on, on their question. So um, we should, I think Pam's question is, how are we gonna do that? Um, but, but first in maybe getting that answer, um, I, I do think there needs to be some common uh, level setting on what the referendum was. If you read through the comments, uh, there's a lot saying, oh, we were misled. It was only to be for open space where when I think, uh, Cindy, when you read it, it mentioned that it would be used for either open space or sports field or other municipal purposes, which leaves a, a fairly broad spectrum of, of uses. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably important just to remind the community what the language was and, and because, you know, having a, a tone of, of being misled is, is not a great springboard for a, a community input session. But, you know, there's some of that in there. And then, uh, you know, I just think as I read through them, it just seems like m m more fact-based. Um, you know, we, I think we can respond to them through uh, just a, a, a list of facts that we know. You know, I had a thought on that, and I'd like to just hear your, your opinions on it. I think that in the next listening session, we ought to answer those questions so that they're part of the whole community dialogue. I wouldn't want, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but it, for, for one of the members of the committee to just answer an individual question to one person doesn't yeah, really- Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, that's not what I was, I think we should have a formal public response. Yes. Maybe and a I was number of different medias. I think we could incorporate it into the next listening session. We could start with answering all the questions. And then I would encourage people not to ask their questions in the chat room. Ask them to the public so that we can hear what their question is and that they can, you know, let the rest of the community know that they have this question. Because that's a huge part of what we're trying to do is understand each other. So I would suggest it be part of the next listening session that we not encourage chat room questions because we couldn't keep up with it that night and many people didn't read the chat questions and it was it was input that was we don't want to lose shouldn't shouldn't the uh the chat room questions be part of some public you know if you have the recording of the whole meeting out uh fishing session then you should have the chat room and the same availability it, it will be when we post the link to that recording the chat room will be visible am i right on that gary the chat room's visible Yes, although unless you're scrolling, yeah, you'd probably see, you know, so the first one comes up, you'll see it pop up for a second. I don't know if it'll capture the entire entire question that's posed. Shouldn't it, shouldn't it just be a separate link that you could go and go through the chat yeah, questions? It's entirely possible. I, it's, I don't know if I agree with 
at the next listening session to answer all the questions. I, I believe if we have all those questions, we should be putting them out right now on our website, getting it out to the community of questions that people asked and answers now. Um, I think that will take up a lot of time at a listening session when we could put it out there. And if people have other questions, we just keep that going, whether we create a video when someone wants to speak and answer all those questions. I, I don't know if I agree that the listening session should have answers to all the questions. I, I would also piggyback and say the other thing, keep in mind is you want the listening, the listening session needs, you wanna, unless we're changing the format, this is still about gathering information. So we wanna make sure that people are, you know, there could be a completely different group of people on this who are asking for something different, which is why when you start to put these numbers together, you've gotta to be careful because right now what you're putting out is a group of all 97 people or 98 people or 113 people, their opinion. You could have another 100 people show up that say, well, I like solar panels since I heard that idea. That's actually a unique idea, I'd want that. Right. With, with, um, with this, I, I I think I second Tara on that Tara on that one where you want to be careful how much time you take away from the list. again unless you want to change the format. Good question. Um, can Alex's beautiful graphs be shared with the public to show they're so wonderful and shows the good quality work he's doing with uh, the listening session what he heard. But they're not complete yet, right? Because we had to get no. But I mean, up. that graft is gorgeous. I mean, it clearly shows on lesson on session one of the visioning. Right. I, I'm with you, Pam. I think they look great. And say we did listen to you. This is what the 97 people who sat on the call. If you are really that interested in what's going on in this property, we want you to get on our next listening session. It's also a way to advertise for people. Hey, you have a different opinion. You need to get on. Yeah, because this is what we heard. <laughs> this is what you said. Or we could say we got we had a, a lot of wonderful suggestions, but we want to listen to yours in the next next session. So it's just as open. Right. This to, is your opportunity, you know. Yeah. Without right. without because we were careful not to uh, not to uh, lead people up until this time. It seems like if you're having another visioning session, it should be just as open ended. Jim, I would agree with that. We don't want to sway the jury. We're, we're not allowed to uh, elicit or share our own personal opinion. Um, I wouldn't want to sway people's perspective. Um, but it might be relevant to do, and, and we heard these themes, uh, if we don't want to get specific. I mean, but that's not, a sub that's not subjective. That's an objective measurement that was taken. I mean, that's nothing from us. That's an objective, right. you know, regurge back to everyone so they know what was spoken about. Nothing to do with us. No, I but I still think it's, uh, it's leading people on. It's Whereas, not leading, yeah, but how is it leading people on if that's what people said? We're just, we're just being well, transparent I mean, to I, I what came building, of the meeting. I think you're building the, it could be mis, people could change their minds based off of public opinion. Right, so it's like, oh, well, this one group is heading in that direction. Let's jump on the bandwagon, or let's not show up to the next visioning session meeting because my, this is, I'm seeing. No. This. Well, I think we need to be transparent. I need. I, I don't think we're not being transparent. I think. Well, I don't think we are if we don't. Well, is share. the no. available? Can can't we summarize on Facebook or something and and kind of give a report? I mean. The, the session's going to be available. Is it available to the public on it, on video yet? Or yes, it should be. Okay. Well, I yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I I worry because I know that we have twenty, we have ninety seven people, but there's twenty three, it's twenty six thousand. I know not, we're not going to get everybody in Weathersfield, but I, I do feel there's a little bit of a messaging in there. That's just my opinion. I think you can kind of, you're starting to build this narrative based on, on that. So I would rather wait for maybe a couple, few more sessions before we release that kind of information. Yeah, I mean, it's not really a big sample size is what it's Mary's not. saying. Out of 26,000 people, we got 97. Uh, that's not really that big a sample size. So uh, 
nor it's is not, it randomized. Somebody asked, oh. Yeah, it's not, I don't think if somebody asked to see it, we don't we show them certainly. Yeah. But I don't know if it's anything we show in general to the public right now until we get a little bit bigger of a sample size. So that's one comment I have. The second comment, as far as transparency, um, and Alex was talking about that. Um, I think one of the people called in said they'd like a link from the town website so that if you go to the town website, you can you know, link and get information about the farm. So I don't know if we have that or if we can do it, but uh, I think that certainly would get more hits and uh, you know, people could be more informed about what was actually passed, like Paul was saying, what was actually passed and kind of what our charge is on this. So just to, just to take a review of what we did on the Facebook page, the very first thing is the referendum. The, it's the timeline where Kathy Bagley set the whole thing up by date. And the next slide is literally the wording of the referendum, which I read prior to the listening session. I think we have to just keep reminding people of that, like Paul said, that there is a charge, that there are these distinct areas. The link to the listening session is not up on the, the Facebook page and needs to be. So in listening to everything you said, I would fall on under the opinion that we should put the link up, but not do anything yet with statistics. Let people hear what other people have said and offered, and hopefully that will encourage them to come to session number two, and hopefully we'll get many different people at that session. Hopefully it's, you know, we'll get more voices. So would that be a solution to the question of how to use the graphs? To so put the words, you, you wouldn't use the graph, you would just provide the link so people could- A link. People right. would pull their own interpretation of what they heard versus what was actually right. heard. Right. I mean, we don't have, I, I don't think 97 people is enough. I think people would be upset that, that we hadn't done enough to, and we're putting this forward as the decision when it's not that at all. So I, I think it's too, I think it's a little premature, but I'm afraid of uh, you know, the public reaction to it. So the link we should have right away. And then we'll start posting on the Facebook page again. So it's in the, the new feed, what the terms of the referendum were. And I think how hopefully from tonight, we'll have a couple of other things that we can do to put on the page with your permission, Gary. And so maybe um, we could put the answers to the questions on the page. Um, once, I mean, that takes some time to go through, but certainly we've got to get some folks, I don't know who the right people are, but on that to, to provide that loop back because mm -hmm. that, you know, we'll lose, I mean, I'm just worried about the transparency too in that people are losing, they're like, you have one session and then we don't hear from you for a while. And I know everybody's yeah. busy. We've got yeah. to like stop back on that. Like, do we need like legal counsel to assist with answers to questions? Depends on. Yeah, I had, there were some uh, questions asked, you know, that do we have legal representation or something to that effect? I mean, and uh, that kind of yeah. concerned me because, goodness, you know. If, if, you know, if you guys as a group, if you want to pick a couple people to try to respond to these and then send me your responses, um, we can review them. My personal opinion is at this point, you don't need you know, legal representation. That, that's, that's an attorney who's asking that question. You know, he was representing his board. Uh, you know, I wasn't Cricket Knoll involved. And, you know, it's, I, I, I picked the group. So if anyone wants to take a shot at me, you can take a shot at me. But if you look. You know, he just wants an answer. How did they get picked? You know, yeah. his question was pretty yeah. uh, straightforward. I mean, it couldn't have been more transparent. I posted it right. in a yeah. binder in up. several different locations and people applied. If, I agree. If a broad mix of the computer. Community. I pick people close and I pick people far away because you know what? As a neighbor, you get impacted, but as a resident and a taxpayer, you're also impacted. So I did a right. project of talent. Right. And, uh, I, I think something. that I, I don't think that I think your your method of choosing and everything was was uh, entirely valid, but um, that might be part of the information that would be available. So people sure. would say, oh, and you know, six months later, who remembers anyway? Um, but if you have it out there. Uh, yeah. that they wanted the names and phone numbers and addresses of the members of the ad hoc committee. Are we okay with that? I'm we fine can... with that. Just put underneath my name. I'm a genius. 
I'm not going to do phone numbers, though. They have no right to phone number. I mean, uh, it, no. it, it, it's a stretch even. For, I mean, address is fine. If you're serving on a commission, you you know, you typically your address is, is available. But phone numbers, I'm, I'm under no requirement to give out. Um, uh, another thing was about our qualifications. Uh, I'm happy to share my resume as well. All right, Alex. Whether that qualifies me or not is, I guess, up <laughs> in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> I guess it did work. <laughs> yeah, even then, I mean, qualifications are subjective. There's, I have people on, I have 240 members serving on committees right now across the town. You know, you never know what talents fit where and, you know. So, you for, so for all those questions, um, do we, do we, you said we wanted a subcommittee to come up with maybe a first response, share it with the group and then We'll get it over to you, Gary. Is that our, our next step on, on those in particular? Yeah, I think and maybe maybe we don't actually send out the answers till after the second visioning session. But but um, some at some point, they sh if they are going to be answered, it should be several people, like, a, as you say, a subcommittee shared with everybody uh, and then sent out, I guess. And uh, you know, one thing, uh, and maybe we should or shouldn't include it in our like frequently asked questions. But I, I know Dan, you you were on the Parks and Rec Commission uh, when they did a study about field util utilization and capacity and those types of things. Mm -hmm. Are those types of studies publicly available as well? So just as an example of the the fact and fiction that I think we should one we should focus on the language of the referendum and the fact that. You know, it was uh, kind of broadly noted what it could be used for. Um, but I know a few people commented that we have plenty of field space. And I think the Parks and Rec did an assessment which uh, showed otherwise. So are, are those types of things available to share with the public? Um, I, I don't know if Gary's still on. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Um, so Kathy Bagley definitely has that. The grid that was set up, I remember it. It was pretty much chuck full. Um, so I think that's uh, available. It was like a grid and it showed the field and who was using it. And uh, I think that's fine to share with the public. I don't have an issue with it. I don't know what Gary. There had to be an assessment, not just a utilization, well, but the... I think showing that pretty much every field is used yeah. constantly. There's really mm -hmm. very few open fields. Um, that kind of speaks for itself without us having to explain anything. Um, Certainly one of the things with fields is you do need downtime for them to recover. And there's not much downtime in any of their fields. So. Hey, hey, Dan, is I that a recent report or assessment or is it, how old is it? Is it valid to? I, I think Kathy just had it done within the last year, right? Okay. Year, year and a half. Yeah. Gary, didn't, uh, I, I remember asking to see that and yet we haven't seen it and we don't, still don't know if it's available. Why is that? All right, well, let's, let's just think about all these great ideas. Let's just, we need a subcommittee to go through the questions. Um, Paul, would you be interested in, in heading that up? Uh, yeah, if you um, tell me who I can work with and I can take an okay, initial have, stab and go from there. A couple I'll, of volunteers, I'll Mary, volunteer. okay. Anyone else that, that would help them out? Jenna, thank you. All right, so Paul, Mary, and Jenna will work on pulling out those questions and coming up with answers that they can then run by Gary and the group. The link to the visioning session, we're gonna get from you, Gary, and we'll put it up on the Facebook page and we're gonna get from Kathy Bagley, we'll get this study on the, not only the utilization of the fields, but maybe even their maintenance or- And, what and, and the condition, because that was one condition. of the big things is that these fields are, they don't drain well, et cetera, et cetera. And right. one of the questions, one of the comments was, why don't we invest in improving some other field rather than making a new one. Yep. Okay, so, so this is good information that we can get out yeah. to the public. Um, yeah, Alex, please. we cut you off a little bit. Did, did you finish with what you wanted to share with us? Cindy, just, uh, uh, Dan, can you contact Kathy about the, the assessment that they did? Or yeah, Gary. Kathy, Kathy has both of them. She's got the uh, field usage. Um, I, I don't know if she's got spring and fall. I think she had like, I remember seeing one or the other. And then uh, she's got, the field conditions. So, um, um, I know some of the fields are bad, and some of them are are fine. So, I'll uh, I'll call her tomorrow. 
And those would be good in answer to questions to put those studies up so that people yeah. could see the truth about the fields and how often they're used and what conditions they're in. All right, Alex, do, do, we want to circle back to you. I didn't, uh, I didn't want to cut you off in your report. Yeah, so I don't really have anything else there. One thing I did want to mention was that one of our questions on our final project, I guess I could ask Dan here. Um, our question is, we, we wanted to see the usage of the current sports fields, and then are they underutilized because they're not in proper condition because draining, etc.? Or is it just because they're just full because that there's just not enough fields? Um, and that was going to kind of push us towards um, a certain observation. Um, so maybe though that data that you were talking yeah. about would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Alex, just for, for context, there's a handful of fields for the new sports that have entered the rotation over the last few years. And um, I'll, I'll use the, uh, the term field loosely. It's just open green space that they've painted lines on. Uh, Cove was never designed to be athletic fields. Uh, behind Charles Wright was never designed to be an athletic field. And, and uh, more established programs like soccer, they have invested heavily in where, where they originally started as open space, but they've actually paid and funded potent, you know, some projects for drainage or resurfacing or, or those types of things. So one of the things I hope Kathy's assessment distinguishes is space that is actually a legitimate field and designed as such versus where we've just taken a line painter and, and mm -hmm. the, field, the, the space looked flat enough to paint lines on it. Uh, because those really, in, you know, from the perspective of the sports organizations are, are not fields, they're just open space. But you give a good example of the uh, Cove Park or whatever you call it, because you already have parking with motor vehicle department and, and you have a flat space. So, invest in, in turning that into a, a well-drained field. Um, that would make sense way better than trying to put a field on the Keisha farm that you have to start from scratch. Um, it's already an open space and everybody knows it's there. Yeah, so let me, let me say something. Um, when you're doing these fields and you have to bring in dirt and you have to bring in drainage, there might not be much of a difference in cost between doing Keisha Farm and doing Cove Park, believe it or not. Um, so I don't know that we should get into that at this point. I know how much it costs to, to do the Little League field at Mill Woods, which was $500,000. Um, wow. And that's not as nearly as big as Cove Park because um, you have to bring in dirt and you have to bring in drainage and everything else under the sun. Um, and you know we got a state grant for that, so the town really didn't pay for it. But uh, it's extremely expensive, so I don't know that there'll be that much of a difference um, one way or another. I just want you to you know understand that to begin with. And uh, I will, like I said, I will contact Kathy on these other two issues. But one of the things the park board has struggled with um, from all the town leagues is. Um, you know, there's not enough time for them to, to practice and everything on it. There just aren't enough fields considering all the um, different uh, things going on in town. Now, so for instance, when I grew up in the, in the fall, there was midget football and there was soccer. In the fall now, there's baseball, there's soccer, there's football, there's flag football, there's baseball, um, there's softball, there's everything. Field hockey. So yes, your field hockey. So just the number of sports being played is what's kind of killing us. Before you you played one sport in the spring. In the spring, you played baseball. In the fall, you played either football or um, uh, uh, soccer. Well, now it's year round for just about everything. So that's kind of what has happened. Sports have exploded, but the fields certainly haven't exploded. So. I'm not advocating for anything. I'm just saying, you know, that's the reality that we've been dealing with. I think that's what the town officials have been dealing with. And if you don't rest them, they just get worse and worse and worse. And uh, the pandemic actually helped us because the field to get the rest a little bit the first time in years. So that's gonna sign it, that's part of the background that uh, 
you know, we're dealing with. Alex, did you want to speak to, since we're talking about fields and things, did you want to speak to the tours? One of the, the, in our efforts to be transparent, getting people onto the farm property as well? Right, yeah. So, um, you know, as um, Ms. Greenblatt just said, um, as we all agreed on, getting people onto the, on, onto the property is, is very important. Um, so I do have a video where I put together, um, which because we're short for time, um, do you want me to just send it, Cynthia, or? What, what do you want there? Um, so let's see. Yeah. It's 5.51. I think, how long is it? It's like four minutes. Oh, no, we can see it. I think oh. I'd like to see all the work that you did. Okay. Um, well, do you want me to share that right now? And then we'll go to the... Sure. All right. So hopefully it's not too choppy. Um, again, I can send everyone over the link um, here. Can everyone hear this? Yes. Yes. New technologies are changing the way we move. Innovations are changing the way we look at things. And there is a need for recreational activities to accommodate a forever changing environment of people. The University of Hartford Keisha Flom's development project is a foundation of research that has begun to examine the possibilities for the project. Anchors of land that sits right in the heart of Redisfield that is just waiting for something to happen to transform the land into something once more. Sitting on the side of the property is an old barn, a house, tons of vacant space and wetlands, and history that goes back decades on end into the past. But right now, we are in the present, looking to gain public input for the future. In 2018, the town of Redisfield voted to acquire a multi-parcel site spread out over an estimated 32 acres. The Keisha Farms property is located in a neighborhood of single family homes, with an abundant park and recreation space, and is approximately steps away from an elementary school. Also on the site is the barn, a greenhouse, and a 2,000 square foot single family residency on another. It is located in approximately to 241 High Street and across the street between 134 High Street and 95 High Street. The property is made up of four parcels of land totaling at approximately 34 acres located at 303 and 310 Highland Street. The other side of the property includes approximately 26.26 acres on the north side of Highland Street, along with the house lot that is 0.87 acres and approximately 5.33 acres on the south side of Highland Street, together with both the barn and outbuildings. Excluded an approximately 0.5 acre parcel on the northwest corner of the property with frontage on Collin Road. Of the 32 acres, about 5.1 acres contain wetland soils. From watching this video, you can see up close views of the property, aerial views of the barns and wetlands, and views of the rest of the foundation. However, from watching this video, you can just imagine what the site is now and what it could be in time. The town of Redisfield has partnered with several students from all academic backgrounds and faculty from the University of Hartford to provide recommendations and to research what could be done with the site for future purposes, with them explaining their findings to town officials and educating the residents about the history of the farm and getting their take on what could become of the site. We are paving the way for the next generation of Redisfield residents. We represent the future of what this site can be. What are the options you may ask? There is restoring the barn, greenhouses, and transforming the land are a few of the long list of suggestions for the use of this property. But we need your help, the input of the residents of Redisfield to make this happen. Join us on our Facebook page. Look for the latest updates and posts about the farm and spread the news to everyone within the town. We are here to speak your language. Learn what you can do now with the site to transform the future of this property for you and Redisfield. Thank you.
Yeah, right. so what we tried to do there was kind of encompass like the entire property. Um, we wanted to show, you know, the house on the property. And then obviously we also wanted to show the barn and be a close proximity to the school. Um, and then we also brought in some of the overhead drone footage. I think for people who haven't seen it in its entirety, that's a nice, you know, a nice look at it. Um, I'm on an iPad. Is Did anyone else have trouble with the audio? A little bit? Okay. okay. I can, I'll send it over to everyone so you can get a direct link. Okay. All right, great. All right, now couple that with the tours. Will you explain to them Sign Up Genius and the idea for the tours? Right, so um, could you remind me on the two dates that you at least had temporarily in there? I or? think it's Saturday the 15th and Sunday the 16th of May. Does that work out right? Let me just check my calendar. That, that might be a little bit close at this point. 15 and 16. 15 and 16. Also, Mother's Day, is it not? No, is Mother's Day. Mother's Day. No, it's next weekend. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mother's Day. 15, 16. Yeah. Right. So um, pretty much Sign Up Genius is uh, a rather easy website. We use it at my university all the time. Um, and pretty much all you do is you click on the link. Um, it's just going to show you the different time slots that are offered. And then it shows you um, the number of time slots that have been already taken. So let's say that it's out of 25. Um, you sign up, you write your name and your email address, um, and then you allot yourself at a time. And that way we can have proper social distancing and, and such. Um, we can also, um, from Sign Up Genius, know who's coming along with numbers so we can have proper, uh, I guess, committee members to walk through the tour. Um, Cynthia, I also have the uh, visual that Kim, that Kim drew up. Do you want me to share that? Yeah, hang on for one second. I just, so the 15th and the 16th, we set it up for, and correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, was it 10 and 12, a one hour tour at 10 a.m. on Saturday and 12 p.m. on Saturday, 12 people was the limit. You know, social distancing, vaccinated, hopefully masks, whatever, you know, warned about ticks, everything that we're gonna have to do. And on Sunday, just one tour at 11, same thing, just an hour. And, and kind of to do the same thing that Alex did, just did in the video, show them the two sides of the property. And then Alex, uh, is it Kim that made the infographic? Okay, so then they made an infographic to kind of go along with this. We had a fact sheet and then this could be given out while we're walking, kind of a, a fun little look at it. Some of the history of the farm, some of the locations. Um, they used an overlay from Weathersfield uh, Geo, so people can see the wetlands, which are on, you know, Collier all the way through the back of the property. And then also the black walnut trees, um, the significant amount of black walnut trees down here. Right, which could lend itself to some great idea. Yeah, the more, the, so in an interest to get people out on the farm, we thought we'd have these three tours with the infographic. Okay, who wants to volunteer to go out to walk through the tick filled woods with me, with me? I'll do that. All right, thank you, Jim. Which one, Saturday at 10 or Saturday at 12? Or Sunday Saturday. at 11? Uh, I'd like to start at 10, yeah, okay. I'll do 10. All right, Saturday at 10, all right, that's good. Anyone want Saturday at 12? All right, Pam, thank you so much. Okay, that's great. Pam, and then Sunday at 11, I'll do that one. Okay, all right, so what, what we'll do with your permission, Gary, is get this right up on, Alex will post this little mechanism for signing up and we'll do it tonight on the Facebook page. And then what other vehicles can we use to get this out to people? That there, there will be farm tours for people who wanna come take a look. Well, on, on the town website, the Keisha Farm, portion of the town website that should be are we on the town website officially or is that just the great elm the great elm would post it for us oh well, great elm would yeah they definitely would yeah okay what about weathersfield life um you know once a month yeah i mean you gotta oh, get a we couldn't get, get it on their deadline yeah no, That's but, but we, maybe a rare reminder probably do oh, rare reminder. yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, if we act quickly, we could get it in rare reminder. You'd have to do it before I think. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow. 
No, yeah. we'd have to do it by tomorrow at noon, right? Tomorrow yeah, at they, noon, Tuesday's their deadline. The, your event isn't until the 15th, so you can do it next Monday. Okay. Right. Yeah, That's good. So, yeah. All right. I mean, fr frankly, you might not want to do it until the following Monday because it might get lost. Okay. So, oh, no, that would give you enough time because I would hit on Thursday. So that doesn't give you enough time. So by next Monday, you can. So do you think we should get it in this week so it'll come out on this Thursday and then that's a 10-day lead time? Well, and then the do course? it again. They'll, they'll usually publish things again a second that's time. True. Yeah. That's I don't okay. think you'll make it by this Thursday. Could we, could we put this a sign the, out near the, the farm? Possibly. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Because there's a lot of families, you know, there's sports going on on the weekends. We could put a yeah. sign out. Walking tour. And then, Alex, is there a dedicated um, website for, I, I know it's Sign Up Genius, but do we have a dedicated, like, you know how we sign in on Zoom? Is there one thing that goes directly to the Keisha Farm? Right. Sign so it's a direct link. It's so it's similar link. to how you click like join the Zoom call. It's it's very right. similar. You just join this, you know, click the link and then you sign up. Okay. So we'd have to get that link. That's a great idea. Anyone want to paint a sign? Well, so I'm not thinking you could pull off a sign. I'm, I, I mean, you'd want a very professional level sign and I don't think you're going to get that print. I mean, you're putting it on town property. So you kind of want to oh. be. Okay. I don't know if you want to, but I'm, I'm sure there's some very talented artists on here. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm Kevin. not one of them. I'm not I know. one of them. Nobody said anything, so. <laughs> All right, so well, great. Well, um, they would take funding to go down to uh, uh, Minuteman Printer and get something, but they could do something pretty quick. What if we have our graphic design student um, put something together and then have it printed? I love that idea. What yeah. do you think, I do too. I think I think we would capture a lot of people having a sign there. Can I be honest? You don't I like it? Well, <laughs> I, I kind of like it, but I, in a different use. I think maybe creating a generic sign that you could use for other purposes, right? That says something about Keisha Farms. You know, something catchy like join the join the join the conversation or whatever, click here for upcoming events or, you know, go to this website for, for the upcoming events. This way you can put the sign anywhere you want in town. You can have more than one, um, you know, or you could do one on one side and one on the other. So if people want to just find out what's going on, you're directing that, you're using that sign to direct them versus buying one that says walking trail, because that's going to confuse a lot of people. And when is it? When's the event? When's, When's it gonna happen? Who do I call? Yeah. All yeah, right, so I like your deal. I like your idea, Gary. When can we get it done? Now, what about using Alex's infographic? What about using that infographic? But I love that. Bigger, and then put, you know, interested in our upcoming events, listening sessions, tours, et cetera, and then give them the Facebook page or the Great Elm as a reference. Could we make a big poster size of the uh, of the infographic and then we could put them around town too probably would you want to have a like the, the equivalent of a po political lawn sign you know with the with the wire and the insert i don't think we have a budget do we gary do we have a budget we do not but if if you do up a graphic let me see what i can come up with with physical services or something see if they're signed people can do something alex yeah. did you send gary the infographic Send, send Gary the infographic that Kim did. Or, or get, and, and also get her to, to uh, make a sign with kind of the general information we're talking about here. Yeah, that actually um, design one. Yeah, let's be creative and be creative. And, and you, you could even send the, uh, the uh, graphic file if it's uh, uh, Adobe, you know, something, whatever format she uses to the town and they could work with that and modify it if we decided it should be something different. Sound good? Yep. Okay. All right, Alex, anything else? Um, well, I guess I'll send over the video tour because the audio was not clear and then we'll get permission to, sh 
to send that off from there, right? Because nobody could really hear it. Um, other than that, I, I think we need to finalize that, those final two listening sessions. Okay. Calendars. Gary, yours is the most important calendar. So why don't you just tell us when you're available? Uh, 2023. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> which event? For which thing? For the List, next listening session listening? number two. Listening session two. And three. Are you listening? <laughs> yeah. Stick with two for now. So, the budget is all kind of up in the air. Um, want to try to give people more notice, right? Because last time that was part of the transparency conversation. Let's see. Um, really hard to pick here. So I would say, I don't know, what's the week of the 24th looking like? It's good. What's yeah. May 20, the week of May 24th? Head of uh, VBA is the 25th. Board of Ed is the 25th. HDC library, right? So Tuesday the 25th is fine. The 26th is a full moon. So that might be interesting. <laughs> um, we need to avoid that. Let's least, do it. We could do it both days and then we can. Then we can determine how crazy people are. <laughs> are we under any time constraints with the uh, uh, U-Haul folks? Yes. Oh, yeah. You guys are graduating and all doing all sorts of stuff. So I kind of want to keep that in mind. Yeah. So I am not. So as of right now, um, I'm the only student um, continuing, at least through the summer. We're in the process, I think, of creating a new team to more do research. But um, I'm available that. I'm available. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Is, uh, is Thursday an option that week? Thursday has the parks board, so you're gonna be you're gonna lose Dan and and possibly some people yeah. who might want to be on that. Yeah. So, okay. So Tuesday the twenty fifth. Well, can yeah, we or you could look the next week. Although now you're gonna start competing against. I mean, we could technically do. Next week. Hold on. Let me just look at something and make sure. Am I in the right month? 25th. Monday the 24th. 25th. I can't do the 27th. I'm just seeing. And Parks and Rec is that day too. So yeah, you could do the week of the 24th. Um, you could also do the week of the 31st, although we'll be closed on the 31st. Better to do the week before, I think. <clears throat> so 5, 525, but let's pick the second date too. Let's do, if you're closed on the 31st, does that mean we have to change our meeting schedule too? Uh, no, because we meet the first Monday of the month and that's so not... that'll be the seventh. Okay. So can we get a listening session in that week? Because then we'd have a lot to talk about on the seventh. You want to do two back to back? Well, it's two weeks separating them, a week separating them. But yes, oh. I do. If we're going Tuesday to do two more. That would be the way to do it. You're right. Tuesday, yeah. the first must be Board of Ed, uh, must be Town Council because they can't be on Monday. So that's not going to work. No, no, no. So the first meeting of Council isn't until Monday, the 7th. Okay. But the first is planning and zoning, and you probably don't want to compete because there's going to be people from planning who are going to want to participate um, or, or listen in. Um, you probably, you could do the Wednesday or Thursday of that week. Okay. What works out best for, the, for you as the committee members, Wednesday, uh, the sec, June 2nd, or Thursday, June 3rd? What time of day will this be? Will this be after 5 p.m.? Usually 7, right? Will we start again at 7? That seemed to work out. You technically could do, I mean, you could do any time after, you know, 5.30 is 
Okay. Want to do it earlier? Want to do it at six? One of them, do it a little bit earlier. How about Wednesday, the June 2nd at six? Oh and yeah, you know what? I can't do Thursday, but I can do Wednesday. Okay, good. All right, so June 2nd and May 25th, at, we'll stick with seven at seven. One at seven, one at six. Which which one should should you alternate? So the 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 earlier one should be the six o'clock, and then the the later one go back to seven. I'm agreeable. Whatever you think is best for people to log on and you know take part. So are you suggesting the five twenty five at six, and then June second at seven? Right. Okay, that's good. Mary, do you have that? Yep. Thank you. So do it again, the 25th at, at six. Mm -hmm. And then the June 2nd at seven. So while and people, people are on the walking tour, we can tell them about these listening visioning mm -hmm. sessions. I'll have Chaz get it this week. I mean, he'll get the sign up genius up. So we'll have the announcement about the tours and then Alex will do the announcement on the next two visioning sessions too. So people will have lots of notice and we'll try and get something in the paper just so we, we hit multiple ways and the great elm. Cynthia, and then I think um, once I finish off these finals, I, I think revisiting the survey given um, we have a little bit of direction maybe from the town, um, we mm -hmm. could send out a survey somewhere in between or after that time. I think that the, the results of the visioning session does give you some guideline for the survey. So I think that's a great idea. I think that's a okay. good idea. Alex, was there anything else? Um, one other question. So right now, I just wanted to confirm, we are presenting to all of you on Saturday the 15th, correct? Wait. Because that to me doesn't sound right, but is that correct? Uh, no. No, I didn't. I don't have. I don't know what that is. No. I think. I think we did say that because you wanted to do it before the sixteenth town council or seventeenth town council meeting, but. But I I know it's a Saturday, so. <laughs> it's tough. I think that thing was original thinking that they when they were going to graduate. Gotcha. Okay. And when is when is graduation? It's that week. Yeah, it's actually the 14th and 15th, although there's only one member um, that's graduating. So how do you want to handle that, Gary? I mean, they, I think it, it's important for these students who have worked so hard on this in so many different ways to present their findings to us. Um, and it could be devoted just to that for those people that could attend uh, a Zoom. And that would be like a dress rehearsal for the town council, which would be good. Well, right. my follow-up was going to be, um, we're still on, on, are we still presenting to the count, council given our limited um, like community engagement? Is it, are they just going to kind of brush it aside because we don't have enough community engagement to really stick? I think that's a good point. What does the committee think? I mean, we did, as much as we would have liked to have gone quicker, we weren't able to coordinate everything. What do you think? Mm. Yeah. I well, agree. If we feel the first one didn't give a representative sample to share with the community, I would be apprehensive to share it with town council. That's exactly yep. what they'd say. I agree. I agree, Paul. All right, Alex, so, no, I don't think we're ready for that yet, but we'd be happy to hear your presentation from the, the student group. That's what I'm thinking. I, Alex, you guys think you'll pick it up in the fall? You're sticking through to the summer and picking it up in the fall? Yeah. Um, I mean, Professor Carrasco can jump on, but uh, I've already started the process of asking Brookpenders to look for students um, from certain like backgrounds. So I am not 100% sure what I'm doing. Like I'm gonna continue to apply for other opportunities, but um, I, I, I think it's pretty clear that we're gonna at least, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna move it into a fall. Hey Gary, there's a lot of takeaways in terms of next steps that will be, be built into the presentation. And that's going to be the jumping off point based upon your concurrence as to how we go forward regarding our uh, fall semester team. 
and the makeup is going to be on a cross-functional basis. I got you. Part of the reason I ask is maybe that's a better time to do it as, you know, like a September, October, although obviously we're bumping up against an election year, but it might be a pretty good uh, opportunity to take all of the, cert you know, you this way you'd have the surveys out for a while, you'd have multiple visioning sessions, the entire summer has gone through, people have used the field potentially for different things. Um, so it, it, it might be an interesting way to pull it together. But my, you know, if, if you weren't going to be there, I kind of want you to, you've done a lot of work. I want to make sure you yeah. get credit where credit is due um, on the work that you've done, that type of thing. But obviously I do agree of presenting to us um, is at least a nice dress rehearsal. Plus, uh, one of the things I shared with, with Cindy was all the information that's done, including the research information, is your pro uh, property. The only thing we would request is going forward is that we create a poster board just highlighting what was discussed. It's like a one pager and share at the university, but we would want your concurrence permission first before we went and released that poster board. But everything else is your property. I always like the free marketing, especially on campus. So are we saying that the presentation will still be to us before the end of the semester, but then postponing town council till September, you know, till September when we've gotten more information and together? That's what I'm hearing, Alex. Um, we need to decide, is that what you would like to see happen? So um, to be honest, yes. So yes, my one question is, would we possibly be able to move the presentation if we're not presenting to the council to the 17th? Because um, as I said, that one member who's graduating um, put a ton of work into this project. Um, and if it's an opportunity, I, I would like her to share her findings. I mean, she did all the grant research. She did so much legwork. Yes, it would be possible I for me. <laughs> yes, I we pre, are so appreciative of what you've done. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I would just feel bad not letting her kind of, um, I mean, she's going to graduate, but I'm sure she still wants to, you know. What time, what time would you like to do that on the 17th? So that has to be before a town council, right? Correct. Council meetings at seven. So it has to be our usual time. Five, five o'clock, I think. Would, would okay, work. May 17th at five. Gary, is this official, an official town meeting that we have to give notice of, or is this just an internal uh, a meeting that we're going to have with the U of H team? Great question. Well, you can think about it and let us know. Let me think about how to handle that um, because we'll call it a draft presentation, right? So it's that same thing. If that information all this information comes out, you know, obviously it's it's in an email, right? Or we're recording what we have right now so people could see the mm -hmm. graphics. Um, let me think about how to handle that. Okay. But we'll plan on May 17th at five o'clock. And uh, Alex, I can't thank you enough for representing your team and for all the effort you put into it. And I think when people have a chance to go back to their email today and see the kind of draft proposal that you included with all the links and the, the suggestions, I think they'll be even more impressed. You know, we haven't been, even seen how much you've done behind the scenes. So I thank you very much for that on behalf of the committee. I very much appreciate that. But, um, you know, obviously I was one of like eight people. So um, it was not all me at all. Um, yeah, a lot of research was done by many people. But you always answered my texts. <laughs> Special place for me. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I feel like that was a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Text, phone calls, emails. That would have been a shot. All right. Can we move on? Any other comments for Alex? All right. Great. Thank you guys so much. All right. New business. New business. I've got the, I was so happy to hear on the listening session that somebody, I think it might've been Barbara Rue suggested that we get in touch with the Eagle Scouts because they had gotten in touch with us, which, you know, just kind of dovetailed perfectly with what she was saying, get the community involved. So the Eagle Scouts are coming. They've taken a look already at the greenhouse. They've determined that it is not too dangerous for them. And I, I asked them specifically to look at it with that in mind. 
And they're going to come on the day we're doing the tours, which is um, May 15th. So that's Saturday. They're going to come and they're going to try and clean out that greenhouse and um, hopefully take a look at some of those seed beds or seed trays and see if they might want to look at something like that for a scout project. But Gary, you have to give them all the parameters. Oh, I yeah, mean, like, I'm going to have someone take a look just structurally at that, whether or not mm -hmm. I want youth poking around in there. Okay. That's, the, both that's, the scouts have been there, but I said you would be in touch with them to just to confirm it if there was anything that you know, you want to specifically point out about COVID restrictions or age restrictions or anything like that. But I think it'll be great publicity for the community to have the scouts on the property and to be uh, participating in a volunteer effort. Um, Cynthia, if, if that's gonna actually happen, I would highly recommend somebody being there and taking a ton of pictures. Um, so then we have some just more social media content in the future. Yes, I think you're what, right. That's the Cindy, kind of thing. Because I can do yeah. that. Oh, great. Um, well, Gary is going to firm up the time, but it was the, the only weekend the Scouts had free was the 15th and the 16th, Saturday, Sunday. But okay. I thought Saturday, we'll start with Saturday and rain date Sunday if it's, you know, if it's terrible weather. So if we schedule it in the morning while people are there giving tours, there'll be a, a lot of us here. And Mary, if you could take pictures, that'd be great. Yep. That would be cool. Cynthia, can I ask one quick question? Sure. Did you say that there's only 12 people allowed on a tour? Did you say 12? Well, you know, you get to set it up yourself. So I chose 12 thinking that people would feel comfortable with that number. I can certainly enlarge it or Alex can add more slots if you think it should be more, but it's only one tour person from the committee and a group per group. So for, I think for what it's worth, the uh, Connecticut Trail Stay uh, has a, a limit of 10 or 12 per guy. But okay. if you had more, more leaders, then you can spread out and have, you know, have concurrent groups uh, taking a different route or whatever, or just departing at a slightly later time. Uh, well, I'm hoping people are, are enthusiastic about it. We could add a, a group on Sunday too, but I only okay. scheduled one. I have a question about that too. Is this, is it gonna be clear um, is it 12 individuals, not 12 families, you know, bring your kids, bring your, you know, I, I'm just concerned, like, as people sign up, they're going to be like, I'm putting my email address in, but then I'm, we're going to go as a family, you know? How I, does think that it's a, I think we've progressed enough in the CDC guidelines and the state guidelines, so we could, we don't have to be that restrictive. Uh, how does it work on sign up genius though? Is it one person at a time? I don't think they can sign up as a family. There's a comment section where you'll say me, or you'll say, I guess you could say the number of people in the directions you could state the number of, of people that are in your party. Mm. That's a good point, Jenna. All right, so should we say anything about families or should we just let people make the decisions themselves or, or they must register each family member? How's that? So that it would know it would never be larger than 12, even if they brought their families. Gary, what do you think about children on the farm? Well, I think there's labor laws, <laughs> that, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> is there a reason why we're picking 12? Yeah, I, I was just no, yeah. just it was the guidelines that like Jim mentioned, I had seen the guidelines that they had given out for walking you know, during COVID and 12 seem to be the number one adult per 12. So I can expand it. I mean, what did you think now that we've, we've broke the ice a little per se, we could make it a little larger. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out yeah. there. I think, well, I think what you, if you just make it open-ended then, but you'll have them sign up so you know how many are coming. If we could have additional leaders, that would be great. I don't know if we, I mean, you guys obviously your sports guys are off doing sports um, on a Saturday. I do think it's kind of interesting. So we're doing this on what the 15th and 16th and on the 19th the governor rolls back the the actual numbers. But but he's already rolled back uh, outdoor numbers quite right. a bit. That's what I mean right so I'm, am yeah. I, I guess are we overthinking it is the question. 
I think at this point, yeah, I think we can relax. I mean, my personal opinion is if a family, if, if a family shows up, it's a family, right? There's three of them there. You know, I don't want to say they count as one, but kind of use your judgment, what makes sense in terms of, you know. Okay, wonderful. Saturday will be busy there because they're going to have sports there, soccer and everything. Yeah, it's going to be parking. Uh... Don't park on my side of the road. <laughs> no, just kidding. Well, actually, I've got to get, I drove by it today and realized that um, I'm not sure where it is on the schedule for mowing. Um, but we do mow, we will mow it down at some point for parking to increase parking, off street parking. Um, I just don't know when it is in the circulation. You're talking about on the farm side? On the, yeah, on the uh, barn. Barn, barn, barn side of the, uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that would really free things up because the street's always crowded with parents. Yeah. I don't think they'll get to it by the 15th or 16th, though, but I have to see where it is in the rotation. Okay. All right, one other thing under new business, and this Tara, you can chime right in here. The Hartford Foundation for Public Giving is interested in grants, giving grants to, uh, to nonprofit entities or people who can partner with a nonprofit entity. Is there any opportunity for us here that we might want to take a look at? The Weathersfield Education Foundation is a nonprofit and they have offered several times, while not officially to you in communication, they have offered at their meetings to try to help restore the greenhouse, the hoop greenhouse. And I read through briefly, Tara, some of the criteria and um, I believe that we could make a case for that. Would, would this be something we'd wanna do? Yes, I think you should. I think everyone and everyone in the town that has something, a project that they're working on, they should apply. I mean, obviously I'll have to, rec you know, I won't be able to vote. I'll have to step aside, but I would definitely do it. We have 30,000 to start off. Okay, that's wonderful because we already had, um, many of you know the Senzaro family and they already came and looked at it and we have an idea of what it would cost. And Gary, I, did I give you a headache? Are you yes. doing this? What it's are you doing? Town. I what don't know if, I, <laughs> It's a town owned property. I'm not sure how much I love the idea of us applying for a grant to clean it up at this stage. No, restore the greenhouse. Restore the greenhouse, not clean. Okay. All right, I, I you're the really, boss. I mean, I, I wanna be considerate of the fact that once you start making these investments into that, you're doing a cost limit with a choice limiting action. We've already done this and we've already done that. The, we're going to get a lot of heat on that. I, I love the idea and the enthusiasm. I'm just very cautious about how we approach it. I know it was a small sample, but it seemed that people were very interested in agriculture and connections with the schools. So I thought it might be a perfect fit, but if you think it's too premature, you know, I just thought the opportunity was there. You don't think it would look like a positive, Gary, that we're not asking for town money or taxpayer money to do a project to help restore something so it's in better shape? So you have a number of issues. You have the fact that we haven't decided what we're doing with it yet. Mm -hmm. Yet we're making decisions based off of what this committee wants um, or a group of 100 people that call. Um, you're potentially, and while I our employees here, I think, are terrific, and they usually don't make a fuss about this. You're basically taking work away from employees, um, right? If you're going to hire someone to do the work, you know, if you do a volunteer, it's one thing, and you're doing for materials, but it all kind of needs to work into the greater picture. And I just want to be careful too, because once you start making the investment in the property, so now who's maintaining? Who's maintaining those greenhouses? Who's ensuring they're secured and safe? What happens if they get ruined? So you, you start to head it in a certain direction, um, kind of without the supports in place um, to do it. And I just want to be careful with how we how we do that. Okay, okay. I defer to your wisdom completely. Or when we do that. Okay. I, I just feel like you you know we're creating a more of a and you know anti-sentiment about what we're trying to do if we move too quickly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I saw the opportunity and I, I thought I'd at least throw it out there as a possibility. So, I, but I completely defer to your, your wisdom on that. 
Yeah, let me um, right, we... piggyback onto what Gary said too. We've had similar situations with the fields where um, it, there's actually a union agreement on what is allowed and what's not allowed. So it's a formal uh, written agreement. And I almost think if you're gonna get people to work on things, there's certain things that probably the union would agree to. And uh, I don't know what Gary thinks about that, but that's kind of what we go by uh, with the park board. In other words, you said volunteers that want to, you know, redo the whole field basically. And it's, it's not that way that things have to be done a certain way. And it has to be very specific, uh, so that we don't violate, violate any union agreements. So. And I, I do think our employees would, would absolutely work with it because they feel very, they're very attached to making this community look good too. So I, I'm not trying to be disparaging, but those are all things they'd have to be part of the conversation and who's doing what. And, um, you know, I think when you have volunteers doing it, it's one thing. You have other contractors coming on and getting paid for it. It's another. Um, and, and what we do is kind of the, the bigger thing. I mean, for that matter, it might be a matter of getting together with them and figuring out the who and the what. So I guess my thing is, when's the application due, Tara? Uh, May 31st. Um, I just I want to be careful. Well, you know, we, we will probably have a next round coming up in the fall. Yeah, when we get more input or maybe we have a plan and a direction, I think it's right. great. I just worry too about what Gary says. I think that we're paving it in a certain direction that people may not want a greenhouse, who knows? Does that mean we should rethink the Boy Scouts? I mean, I don't want, you know, I, I had the contact with them. Does that mean we should rethink? That's, that's volunteer though, that's making it look a little better Isn't that and it's a cleanup and there's a lot of trash there that's not even attached to the greenhouse so what all they can do is uh is uh, it, i don't know what you're going to do what are they going to do with it when they get done are you going to have a town truck there to load it into or uh, how are you going to do that i just i like gary said i don't want people to think that we're you know pushing in any direction but they had reached out yeah, I personally think a cleanup is different than renovating it yeah. for a purpose. Okay. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't they do something at a later date? I mean, they could either rip it down or put it up, you know, I mean, but depending on the public interest. But they're just they're just ripping plastic that's really bad down. Oh, no, so. no, no, no. They're not doing anything like that. They, if you remember when we saw the greenhouse, it's filled with knotweed. The greenhouse yeah. is filled with knotweed. All they're doing is cutting that down. Oh. And they're cleaning the inside they're not touching the structure at all it's a, just oh. a volunteer project well oh well it's cutting, it's, it's by the way cutting not, scope cutting knotweed is a futile activity because it grows right back up again if you're not it's chemically assisted but that's another question but there's a lot of trash out there it'd be great if they could pick up the trash um and uh, they're good at that, I know. <laughs> Gary, we do have that cove cleanup every year. And yep. I, I think the town assists on that. Um, is it something similar we can do? At the cove cleanup, I've done it several times. The town provides the trash bags and then you can leave them there. And then the, the town crew comes at some later point and picks them up. Maybe it could be- Or, well, on, on the, on the uh, source of sea cleanup, the- uh, Connecticut River Conservancy supplies a dumpster, but that's another, that's another thing. Um, but yeah, I, I have, the town has uh, passed on uh, cases of bags to me and I could bring them. And uh, yeah, we, so we could fill a bunch of plastic bags and leave them there. And then the town crew can pick it up some other time. On a, Does that work, Gary? The, it would have to be coordinated. We can talk to physical services about it because uh, I don't yeah. just want someone coming on there and being like, okay, come pick up my trash. It, ha it would have to be like a like an organized kind of date, time, and event um, to do it. And again, I just want to be cautious and considerate of the crew who is sometimes under attack for budget cuts and that kind of stuff. And so. Well, we have the, we have the date, the 15th. This and uh, it's coming up pretty quick, but. We received some correspondence. I don't know if we want to move to that, Cindy. Um, yes. There was correspondence that 
that Gary, you received, I received, and then I sent it over to Cindy. Um, they're planting, volunteers in some of the elementary schools are planting sunflowers and um, they're asking if we would be interested in, in planting some giant sunflowers near the barn. Um, just a thought, um, I don't know any more, many more details about it, but we could find out. Um, and then there was an additional idea of putting with the plywood on the windows that potentially maybe some um, aspiring artist or high school student or whomever would like to do some painting on that to make it, to sort of beautify it a little. That would be great. Some cows looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all in favor of them painting the, uh, making them look like windows, the, the boards. Yeah, make them look like windows. We could do that. Frank, uh, frankly, I was upset when we just put up four by eights over it. I thought they were going to mount them on the inside, but apparently there was nothing to secure it from that would stop, you know, if someone wanted to break in, they would just push them forward. So any, any reaction to that or just uh, to put it under consideration at this oh, point? Oh, no, I think it's a wonderful idea. I hope that we can move forward with that tonight. Sunflowers would be a great investment for the fall. And um, another resident actually mentioned the plywood to me that it was very unsightly. So I think that would be a big improvement. Do you want to get back to her, Mary? Yeah. And then who, who should she reach out to? Um, Cindy and Gary? Or no? Gary? Gary, do you, you're okay with the committee? Uh, we, well, I guess we could, Cindy, you and I could work on it. Okay. Is that yeah, okay? Yeah, just let me know what you do, what you figure out. Obviously when you're planting, we've just got to figure out where and so our guys don't come in and cut them down. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Or like not okay. realizing it, like, oh, it's a weed. <laughs> All right, any other business to come before the committee? Anybody thinking of anything that we haven't covered or, you know, any, anybody have any ideas about transparency? I just hate that when people think that we're not being transparent because it is our, our goal, you know, I think. To be I, just, I have a question. Um, there is, are they still, is your friend or is that gentleman with the Keisha's permission still farming on the- Yes, he is, side? yes. So is that giving us any tax break for right now, not for the taxes for this property? Well, they don't pay taxes because the town owns no. it. Town owns the property. That's the Gary, but I know I'm asking Gary that. If, if the town, don't we get some money back from him farming it so the cost of the taxes are less? I'm having trouble with so, question. Is, so, he, is he leasing the farmland? No. What no. he's doing is keeping I it thought, down, maintaining it, saving the town the cost of maintaining the fields. I thought yeah, there was... So a, a, some sort of a tax, as long as the land is being used for farming, that that's true of, of your state. taxes. But that's a, there's a program for that. If you, if you own property and it's farmed, you pay less taxes than somebody who's not farming it. So Come the tax does not get any break in taxes with that being farmed. Is my question? There, yeah, there's no there's no taxes involved because it's town owned property. No one's there's no taxes owed. Oh, okay. So there are. So he basically we're. Uh, you know, it's, frankly, it's more about having eyes on the scene, knowing that he's out there on a regular basis, taking care of the area and maintaining his stuff. That kind of gives us a good insight as to what's going on. If there's been any vandalism, it looks more active. So there's. Oh yeah, no, I'm all for it. Yeah. One of the one of the people said that all that rusty equipment out there, she doesn't know that those are antiques that are functioning and being used. They're 1942. Uh, John Deere A tractor and D tra D model D tractor, and uh, he's got a bunch of other functioning equipment out there. Um, uh, Cynthia, going back to transparency real quick, <clears throat> was there any? I didn't really hear much back from the idea of creating more um, more outlets. Mm -hmm. At least, did you did you are you interested in Instagram and? Uh, I don't think Twitter is going to reach the audience you you think it might, but maybe Instagram. Okay, yeah. So Instagram, I mean, you know, because there's there's very beautiful pictures of the barns. If there were sunflowers, um, cleanup, painting, you know, it, it's it's right. it's a picture. Um, my my question would be in terms of Twitter. Is it because people just are 
you're not on Twitter? Or I was thinking more in terms of an update. Like, you know, Twitter's we, can used try. we can certainly try it. I mean, I just think if, if you saw the demographic of the, of the public that got on the call, I mean, I'm not sure that they're going to get their information about the Keisha farm from Twitter. They right. wanted a website and that's the, that's the place to start right there and have links to all the things they did want that possibly public putting bios of the committee members might be uh, something that would fulfill one of the transparency questions. Maybe. What's the qualifications of these people on the committee? Yeah, the and and we'll I'll take a look at the website, but you know I had responded back. If it's the same person that we're talking about, I had responded back. There's a lot of information available on the website. It's just not jumping off the page, and that's because we have a limited access website, which is very frustrating. But it also costs money to change it, and I had that's one of the things I took out of the budget to try to save some money. So, um, you know the. The reality is the minutes are available. The committee members, I think, are actually already available, but I'll double check when you look under uh, boards and commissions. Um, but again, I will look. The uh, Zoom meeting is public. People could have signed on tonight and listened to everything that we discussed. I mean, yeah, Keisha might not be posted. So, I, you know, I'll create that as a board and a commission to make sure it does fall under uh, the announcement section. But the announcement section only holds four or five. And so depending upon if something comes under it, it gets bumped up. Um, you can put it on the town calendar section. Um, you know, if you look at the if you look at the website right now, it actually lists the Keisha Farms Committee meeting being active right now. So it's it's uh, you, you know we'll try to find other places to do it. But the the push and pull is so I have a, one individual saying you're not being transparent because it's not on the website. If I make it larger or blow up the Keisha stuff, something else gets dropped off, and someone yeah. that that's not on the website. So. It's, it's kind of like, yeah. you know, no matter what you do, you did it wrong. Uh, right. The individual commented they, they intentionally didn't want to be on Facebook. So putting it out on Facebook isn't necessarily helpful to them. Okay, I understand that. But putting it on Twitter isn't going to help either because you're probably not on Twitter. So right. you've got to figure but out I, how to cast a wide net and it's hard. Yeah. I'm thinking more of the information that's on the website that you go to Keisha Farms in parallel to what's on Facebook should be also on a website because the people who aren't on Facebook might be on a website or might be able to go to a website. Right. That's why our original pitch to get a consultant on board was to have them create a website. So yeah, that yeah, yeah. we just don't have the capacity. Right. So, what um, IT guy for the entire town right now. Right. Yeah. Alex, you could create a website though, right, for us, and then we review it. And yeah. So I was thinking, I mean, I can make a basic website. I have taken like two classes on it. Um, Professor Garashko, what about possibly adding into um, our criteria for a student in the fall about somebody who, who knows a little bit more about digital marketing than I do um, in terms of website creation? Well, one of the criteria when we looked at the new team, digital marketing was number one or number two. So I would agree. Oh, heartily. That could be uh, next steps going forward. But yes, we could support you there. Cool. I don't mean to cut you guys short. I've got uh, yep. I've got to switch other to another Zoom in a few minutes. Okay, so our next meeting is going to be with Alex and the University of Hartford team. It's going to be on the 17th and it's going to be at five o'clock. All right, and Gary, you'll figure out how to let the public know about that. For the one on the 17th, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, folks. Thank you. All right, thanks. Nice job, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. So much. Good time. Bye-bye.